the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams is not gonna come knocking on your door while you're meditating. I have so much proof of how my thoughts change my energy, change my actions, change my reality. The easiest way to have the life that you want is to have it before you have it. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the law of attraction, what it is, how to use it, and how to actually attract everything that you want into your life. Now, before I dive into it, I understand. This might seem weird and woo-woo-y, and I completely understand that because I'm a very logical, sensible person. But when I go through this, and I'm very analytical as well, you're going to see what I mean by how the law of attraction works, whether you happen to be woo-woo-y or whether you happen to be a very analytical, science-based type person, this is gonna make sense to you no matter which one you are. And I'm gonna teach you how to use the law of attraction to get what it is that you want in your life. Now, I'll tell you this, I've been using it now for about 15 years, and I can tell you this, no matter what your stance is on the law of attraction, it works. If you take notes on this, if you use it, I'm gonna teach you how it works, how to use it in your life, and how to get what you want in life as well. On a basic sense, this is what the law of attraction says. It says that you can attract anything that you want into your life, but you need to believe in it to your core. And if you believe in it to your core, every single cell in your body, then you will get whatever that thing is. But that's the secret to it, is that you have to, you have, you have 50 trillion cells in your body right now, right? You have to get all of those cells to go towards that one thing. And the way that you control your 50 trillion cells is through the central voice, your thoughts. And that's what we're going to go into. I'm going to go much more in depth, but basically you will attract into your life what you think about the most. That's the easiest way to think of the law of attraction, but we're going to go much more in depth than just that alone. Now, you may have seen the movie The Secret. The Secret is on the Law of Attraction. I think it's a great movie. It's a great book. But I think it leaves a lot out. The way that The Secret seems to be for me is I'm going to sit down. I'm going to figure out what it is that I want. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to think about it all day long. And it's just going to the universe is just going to bring it into my life. And I think that that's part of it, but it's missing a lot. And that's what I want to dive into. And there's no real explanation of how it works. So it makes it a lot easier to believe in something when you know exactly how it works, because then you go, okay, yeah, I can get behind this idea. You know, you can't just sit there and just meditate the rest of your life and try to meditate a million dollars into your bank account without actually getting up and doing something, right? So it requires you to, yes, the law of attraction, but also it requires action. You got to do something. So we're going to dive into that. And to understand the law of attraction, we must understand our bodies as they are. Our bodies are molecular structures that are vibrating at a massive speed at all points in time. So you can look at my hand and my hand seems like a solid object, but my hand is not solid. It is actually vibrating. If you were to be able to look at my hand through a microscope, you'd be able to see all of the trillions of cells in my body, all of them moving at a specific rate, whatever that is. If you look at anything that you can see in your physical reality, everything is a vibrating structure. My desk, this podcasting mic, the camera that's recording it on, my computer that's recording this audio, everything is vibrating. It's just that everything is vibrating at different speeds. And we're constantly vibrating. Everything is. The difference between my body and my desk, though, is that my desk is one constant speed, one constant vibration. My body changes depending on my thoughts and my feelings. So, you know, I'll give you a perfect example of, of, of how this is going to make sense to you. Have you ever walked up to somebody and you just have a bad feeling around that person? Like there's just a feeling of something's not right, right? That is your body's vibration and their body's vibration coming into contact with each other. And they're not in alignment in some sort of way. That's called destructive interference. If you want to go deeper into it, right? But have you ever met somebody before and you don't know why, but you just connect to them and you get an incredible feeling around them? That is my body and their body, their fields coming together. I know it sounds weird. I get it for those guys that are analytical. Our fields coming together because your, your vibration of your body doesn't just stay within your skin, right? So we are in alignment. If I'm vibrating at a certain rate and that person's vibrating a certain rate, I'm gonna have good feelings. That's where the phrase good vibes come from. That's also where the phrase bad vibes come from. As you can tell whether something's right or right, wrong, you can tell whether someone is right or wrong based on basically how you feel. Now, in order to understand how the law of attraction works, we must understand two separate things. Number one is our conscious mind, which is the mind that you hold all of your thoughts in. And the other one is then your subconscious mind. So we're gonna get really deep today. 
I hope you're ready, right? Your conscious mind is the mind in which you think, right? Your conscious mind is only about 5% of your thoughts throughout the day, right? Everything you think about, and you can only hold one thought at a time. Your subconscious mind is like your mind's filing cabinet. It doesn't know this is true, this is false. It just takes all of the information and stores it all away as if all of it is true. It doesn't decipher the information, doesn't think about it, any of that stuff. But what's interesting is that your subconscious is in control of about 95% of your thoughts, your feelings, and the way that you see the world as well. So it's really important before we dive into the law of attraction a little bit more in depth is to actually understand the way your subconscious mind, which nobody tends to talk about when they talk about the secret and they talk about the law of attraction, how your subconscious mind actually dictates the law of attraction in what rate you're vibrating at. Now, you have to realize this. The subconscious mind, once again, just takes everything that you say and automatically stores it as true. So if you talk negatively about yourself in your head, if you talk trash to yourself, say, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid, then it's automatically going to take that conscious thought stored in the subconscious as true. So if you constantly just keep thinking this and thinking this and thinking this, that thought of I'm stupid over and over and over again now becomes a personality trait of somebody who is stupid. And now you actually believe at your core that you're stupid. If you think, oh, I'll never attract the right man or I'll never attract the right woman or, you know, all guys are players or any of those types of things, those thoughts will then store into your subconscious and you will take actions that line up with what your subconscious believes in. So after years and years and years of thoughts being away, being stored away from your conscious to your subconscious, you will develop a paradigm. A paradigm is what you believe is true. And it's usually in the subconscious, so you don't even think about it. It has shaped your life throughout the years. This, your program from your childhood is where your paradigm, your, that's actually what dictates what your paradigm is going to be. So if your paradigm is a, is a child, um, if it shapes the way that you view the world as an adult, it's everything. It's what you believe, it's what you don't believe, it's what you love, it's what you hate, it's the language you speak, if you believe in yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, if you talk down to yourself, if you're rich and successful now, if you're poor now, if you ever will be rich and successful, if you'll continue to fail in relationships, if you have you know, a successful one, the way that you raise your kids, your paradigm literally dictates everything that you do, everything that you think, everything that you feel, everything your conscious mind, everything your subconscious mind, it dictates everything. So let me give you an example. If you were born poor as a kid, right, and your parents always got in fights about money and your parents were always in debt and they said stuff like money doesn't grow on trees and money's the root of all evil and you know in order to be rich and successful you have to screw people over then your brain's going to take that and take that and take that and take that and then it's going to consciously store it into your subconscious and now you've got a paradigm just around money itself of i have to screw people over i'm never going to be rich and successful you know um I have to do bad things to make money. Money's the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. Now I've got a paradigm around money, which is going to change my perception of the view of money of the world. It's going to change my thoughts around money. It's going to change my vibration around money. And it's going to dictate the way that I either attract money or don't attract money or the actions that I take to go make money or the actions I take not to make money. So if you're poor now, as an example, if you're rich now, as an example, if you're good in relationships now, if you're bad in relationships, all of those are guided by your paradigm. And those were all programmed into you at some point in time when you were a kid. Now, that being said, when we're looking at the programming, we're looking at the conscious and the subconscious mind, we're looking at the paradigm, it's not something that you can just change overnight. It's not just something that happens quick and easy. It takes time, but believe me, it's worth putting time into and to actually start figuring these things out right so ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to in its simplest form we're trying to affect and change all of the results that we have in our life we're trying to affect our our and change all of the results around our money making more money if we want our relationships having better relationships our happiness our joy our success everything and it all starts with what you think right and what you think whether it's good or whether it's bad goes into your subconscious and will eventually produce whatever results you want in your life now, if you want to change your results, you're going to have to change your thinking, right? And all of your results typically line up with your paradigm. So let me give you an example. There's gonna be a lot, I promise you. I told you this is gonna be a big, this can be a rich episode, just so you know. 
Do you know somebody who has all of the education in the world? They have, you know, degrees falling off the walls and they're getting another degree and another degree and another MBA and all this stuff, but they just can't seem to succeed. They just can't seem to figure it out. Do you know anybody like that? Have you ever heard of someone like that? Why do you think that is? Because they think that education is going to change them, but it's not. What actually changes and needs to change is their paradigm because they can get all of the education they want to in the world, but their paradigm hasn't, hasn't changed. Now, what does this have to do with the law of attraction? Your paradigm is in control of the frequency of vibration that you set off into the world, the frequency and the vibration that your body is at. So in order to change your vibration, you must change your frequency. In order to change your frequency, you have to understand how your programming works, how your paradigm works, and what is stored inside of your subconscious. And when I say change your frequency and your vibration, the easiest way to think of it is this. You know, if I'm inside of my car and I'm going for a drive and I have the AM station turned on in my car, my car will never pick up an FM station if I am tuned into an AM station, right? It won't happen because I'm in an AM station, not an FM station. So the same thing happens where if the law of attraction, the way that it works, if I have a poverty mindset, if I have a poverty paradigm, if my subconscious is being run by you know, these poverty thoughts and money's the root of all evil, you have to screw people over and you have to work all day in order to become successful. If I have that poverty mindset, then I'm going to send that, it's, it's in my thoughts, it's in my body, I'm vibrating in a poverty mindset frequency, I'm gonna send that out into the world, right? So an example of that would be all of the people, places, opportunities, and things that could get me out of my poverty mindset, I won't even notice them. Why? Because if someone comes in that could change my, or an opportunity comes in that says, oh, this could get me out of my poverty mindset, I'm not even going to recognize that it's something that could help me. I'm automatically going to push it away the same way that if I meet somebody and I'm not vibrating at the same frequency as them, I'm going to get bad vibes. So for instance, I might have a poverty mindset and the best freaking investment opportunity or the best business idea can come into my awareness, can come into my field, can come into my, you know, I can literally be sitting there and talking to somebody who's got the best business investment that can make me millions of dollars. If I'm vibrating as a, at, a, at a negative, you know, poverty mindset, I'm not even going to take that thing as an option. I'm going to be like, no, this isn't right. It doesn't feel right, which is usually how you can tell, you know, the frequency. It doesn't feel right. Why? Because I'm vibrating in poverty. If abundance in, in wealth comes into my life and starts to vibrate, I'm not going to be in line with it. There's going to be a part of my body that says, no, Rob, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Therefore, I will reject that person. I will reject the opportunity. I will reject everything around me that could get me into my abundance, that could get me into my wealth because I and met a poverty mindset. Make sense? If I'm vibrating at that frequency of poverty, then anything that's not lined up with that poverty, I'm going to reject. It's crazy, isn't it? You know, so what happens is we have to get ourselves on a quote unquote money-making frequency. We have to realize that our programming of money's the root of all evil and you know, you have to screw people over. Whatever it is that is your 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 frequency, the station that you're turned into, the same way that if I'm on an AM station, I won't be able to pick up an FM station. If I'm on a poverty frequency, I'm not gonna be able to pick up an abundance frequency or a wealth frequency. It's simple. It makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Remember, the difference between myself and my desk is that we're both vibrating, but I can change my, my vibration. I can change my frequency. I can change the station that I'm turned into right? So you will attract whatever vibration or station that you're turned into. And you can only listen to that one station. So if I'm on a poverty mindset, I won't be able to, poverty station, I won't be able to get the abundance and, you know, abundance and in, in wealth frequency if I'm on the scarcity one. Let's go to another one. If you've been screwed over, maybe, you're, maybe your parents divorced when you were younger and your mom talked about how all men screw you over and men are cheaters and don't trust men or you heard her, maybe she didn't even say it directly to you. Maybe you overheard her talking to friends about it, right? And then you grow up and you get into a relationship and maybe you get cheated on. You're like, oh my God, my mom was right. You start to actually think so many times over and over and over and over and over again, men are cheaters, men will screw you over, you can't trust men. You know, this is just an example. It could go the other way for men to women, women to men. And you keep repeating that thing over and over and over inside of your head. 
what's going to happen is you are eventually going to to create a paradigm around that you're going to go from your take it from your conscious thoughts store it into your subconscious mind which is going to change the frequency that you're vibrating at and that's why so many people are like i don't know why i keep dating men that are broken i don't know why i keep dating men that are assholes i don't know why i keep finding people who are screwing me over who cheat on me all of this stuff is because we tend to attract into our life whatever it is that is going to line up with what we believe is true in our conscious mind, in our subconscious mind, in our paradigm, we are going to attract those things into our life. So if we, even if we consciously, even if you're a woman out there or even a man out there that just wants a, a really good man, you're still going to attract the ones that are not good for you if you're always vibrating at the frequency of men will screw you over. Same way for men, for women, for all of this stuff, you know, you can switch out all of the genders and any way that you want to. It just makes sense though, doesn't it? So the same example, if I'm a, a woman who wants a really good man, but I've been screwed over and my mom said things when I was younger, when a really good man comes into my life, I won't even vibe with them or be attracted to them in any sort of way because they don't line up with the reality of the way that I see the world. I'm only going to be attracted to the people who reinforce my paradigm of the way that I see the world. So that's why, you know, someone comes in, they could be really good for them. And you're like, why don't you see your friend maybe? And you're just like, why doesn't she like him? Like he's perfect for her. Why? Because he, as a really good man, doesn't reinforce her belief paradigm consciously and subconsciously of the world of men are assholes, men screw you over, men are cheaters. Why does she always end up with those types of people? Because that's what she believes at a, in a, a, a thought and at a cellular level that men actually are. This is what meditation's for. This is what going out and actually becoming aware of these things is for, is so you can start to reprogram yourself. You realize, what station am I tuned into? What station are you tuned into? In your relationships, in your wealth, in your business, in your life, in your thinking about yourself, what station are you tuned into? Because whatever station, if I'm tuned into 98.7 FM, I'm only going to get 98.7 FM. I'm not going to get 710 AM if I'm tuned into 98.7 FM. So I've got to pay attention to, man, what do I actually consciously and subconsciously think is true about money, about business, about relationships, about wealth, about happiness, about abundance, about scarcity, all of these things, because that's going to dictate where my body is vibrating at. And if something vibes with me, which is usually going to, you know, that's called uh, constructive interference versus destructive interference then I'm going to actually understand that I'm only noticing and attracting things into my life that line up with the way that I actually truthfully, deep down at a cellular level, believe the, will, the way that the world is. So that's why you can consciously want success, but then you're not taking any action. That's why you can consciously want to have the best relationship, but you're screwing them all up or finding the wrong person. That's why you can consciously want to have a successful business, but you're freaking sleeping in and you're bringing the wrong business partners in. And all of these things are happening is because you have to become aware, not only just of your conscious thoughts, but of your subconscious thoughts and your paradigm around all of that, because that's 95% of what you think about. And it doesn't happen overnight. Like I can't just go, oh my gosh, you know what? I'm gonna change my frequency and I'm just a different person. You know, you can try to work on it every single day, but you have to res you have to literally brainwash yourself into believing that. That's why I have an episode, you know, that's, you know, brainwash your, uh, your way to success, or you have to brainwash yourself to change your paradigm. And that's brainwash yourself to be successful. That episode that I did, talks about how you have to spend every single moment, every downtime brainwashing yourself with what it is that you actually truly want to do in this world. So if you don't see results right away, it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Just realize it takes time for you to reprogram yourself. If you're 35 years old, you've got 35 years of programming. It might take more than a couple weeks to start to switch your programming, start to switch your paradigm. And remember that we're all programmed from a young age. So our, our, our job now as adults is to go back, look at what our, para our paradigm is, look at what our programming was from a young age, ask ourselves, does that line up with the future that I want for myself? And if it doesn't, then I need to consciously change it and also subconsciously change it because my, it starts with my thoughts, which is my conscious mind. They're stored into my subconscious mind. That changes my vibration, which then changes what I attract in my life. That's why if I 
have a poverty mindset once again and a great business opportunity opportunity comes into my awareness comes into my life i will be like no it just doesn't feel right it, it's not that it doesn't feel right because it's not right for you it doesn't feel right because it's actually not vibrationally matching where you are it's too freaking abundant for you for where you are right now so if you want something in your life are you tuned into it Think about that for a second. If I want something in my life, I need to be tuned into that freaking thing. If you want something in your life, are you tuned into that station? If you want something in your life, you need to be tuned into that, st that, that station so that you can start attracting it into your life. You know, the one thing that I don't like about the secret is that it acts like, you know what? I, if I want to have the best relationship in the world and attract the best man or the best woman into my life. I need to sit there and I need to meditate it into my life and meditate and meditate and meditate. And eventually that man will just show up at my door. No, you have to literally after working on yourself, after working on the programming, after diving into what your paradigm is, you have to get off your ass and actually take action. The, the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams is not going to come knocking on your door while you're meditating and you're just going to attract him or her into your life. The missing piece a lot of times is that you have to actually get up and take action. Okay, I'm going to program my thoughts, my feelings, which is my head, my heart, my body to go and find this person that I want or to find that wealth that I want or to find whatever it is that I want. And then I'm going to get my physical vibrating body and put it out into the world to be able to actually go find these things. That's what I always find is missing when people talk about the law of attraction is what I like to call the law of action. You got to get your ass up and get moving. You got to do something. You got your mind, you're working on your mind, but is your body out there in the actual physical universe going where you can talk to other people of the opposite sex, right? Around people who happen to have the business that you want. So if I want to attract the perfect woman into my life, right? And, uh, and I'm sitting there, if, if you're out there, you're a single guy and you're like, I want to attract the perfect woman. I'm just ready to, I'm ready to stop playing games. I want to attract her. If you're, that's what you're thinking, right? You can meditate on her all day long, but she's not going to come knocking at your door. So you got to meditate, meditate, you know, get the vibration. How do you feel about it? Are you starting to actually feel that maybe a real relationship is something that you're, you're going to settle into? Like, is your body at that vibrational frequency? And, and it sounds weird. I understand the vibrational frequency and all that stuff, but you can ask yourself, do I feel ready to attract the right person? Do I feel ready to bring in the right person into my life? And you can feel in your body the relaxed state that it can get into then your physical body, you've actually got to leave your house, right? You've got to leave your house and go to places where you think that person might be. And what happens is whether you realize it or not, the same way that you're vibing with somebody, they also need to be vibing with you. So you might, might find somebody right now and they might be the perfect person for you, but because you haven't changed your vibrational frequency, to them, it doesn't feel right. So if you work on yourself, that's why they always say, if you, want to, if you want to find the perfect person, become that perfect person first, because then you're going to match them vibrationally. And then it's going to be good vibes between the two of you, constructive interference versus destructive interference, AKA bad vibes. So you can't just meditate that person into your life, right? Same way that if you want to have a million dollars in your bank account, you need to program and consciously think about this money that you want to make. And you've got to consciously brainwash yourself into believing that this is actually true. But then you've also got to get out and go make the money. The money's not just going to show up and you're not going to just, you know, ding dong, FedEx is here at your bank, you know, or is, that your, is at your front door and they just drop a million dollars in cash. No, you've got to physically and mentally work on yourself so that your vibration is at the right frequency so that therefore you go out and when the right opportunity or person or place or thing comes into your life, you go, that's it right there. That's the thing that I was working for. It, and it might not, you might not think it's right, but it actually feels right. The reason why it feels right is because your vibration is lining up with that vibration. So when they say attract things into your life with the law of attraction, this is what it's talking about. What you think about will be stored into your subconscious. Your subconscious will change your vibration. That vibration is at a certain frequency and you will only line up and get things that line up with that, you know, only get things that line up with that, that frequency. If you think you're going to be poor your whole life, you're going to be poor your whole life. If you think you're going to be wealthy to at a cellular level, deep down, 
you'll eventually be wealthy. It's going to come to you. If you think that people are always there to screw you over and that men are, the, are going to screw you over and cheat on you, then you're going to find a lot of those people because those people line up with the reality, line up with the frequency that you're vibrating at. You're going to find only those people. But if you switch it around and you truly believe that the right person for you is out there, as long as you get yourself out there, that person is going to find you. You're going to find them. And when you do find, you're going to match vibrationally, which is how the law of attraction works. So I've done past lessons talking about the law of attraction, but now we're going to talk about how to actually use that in your life. And one of the things that comes down to immediately, and I want to start off before we go any further, is to tell you this. If you want to attract quote unquote, the life you want, if you want to manifest the life you want, or if you just want to create the life that you truly want. The first thing that you need to start doing is to stop focusing on what you don't want. So I'm going to take a, take a pause and I'm going to ask you a question before you go any further. When you were, if you were to take yourself out of your own head and look at everything that you think throughout the course of a day, between your 60 to 80,000 thoughts that you have every single day, which is about average for a human, are you focusing and thinking more about what you want or are you focusing about more of what you don't want, what you fear, what you're worried about? Because what you focus on, you will get more of. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this episode is because my girlfriend, Lauren and I, we were driving about three nights ago. We were driving back from dinner and we were just talking about life and about how I feel like basically all of my dreams have come true. Like I don't really have a whole lot of goals because I'm like, damn, I kind of checked them all off the list, which is awesome. But I feel like I am the creator of my reality. Like I feel like I created this life. Now, obviously I had people that helped me. I had mentors along the way. No man is an island. But I feel like I created this as if I was a painter that walked up to a blank canvas and just wrote down exactly what I want. And I drew out this perfect life and I created it. And one joke that my mom and I have had for a really long time, since I got started getting into personal development about 15 years ago, since I got into the law of attraction and trying to manifest things, is that I tell my mom, and I've told her, because she's always like, how do you always, she's like, you always get what you want. And I'm like, most of the time I do get what I want. And the reason why, and here's a secret, this is what I told my girlfriend the other day, is the opposite of what I want. So first off, actually, before I say that, I know exactly what I want. I'm very clear on exactly what I want. I'm very clear on the, the life I've wanted to create, the lifestyle I've wanted to create, the traveling that I've wanted to do, the money that I want to make, the person that I want to attract into my life, the people that I want to be surrounded by. I'm very, very clear on all of those. The reason why I happen to get those things in my life is because the opposite of what I want doesn't even exist in my reality. In my head, I never go to fear that I won't get what I want, worry that something could come up in the way, worry about other people's opinions. The opposite of what I want doesn't even exist in my reality. So why do I get the life that I, why do I have the life that I've created? Is because nothing else exists in my reality. I'm walking up to a blank canvas and I'm painting whatever the f I want to create. Right? So when you think about your life, are you thinking of your life the exact same way? Or are you thinking about the things that you don't want? Are you focusing on worry and fear and sadness and all of the negative emotions? Right? So I can give you many examples in my life. First off, since I'm already talking about my girlfriend, my girlfriend didn't want to date me when she first met me. She didn't want a boyfriend at all. She just got out of a relationship a couple months before. And I was like, hey, that's great and all, but I think I'm pretty good. I think you're pretty good. I think we'd be a good match. And eventually she was like, oh, I do like this guy, right? So she was like, yeah, she tells the story all the time. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't in the mood. I didn't want to date people. I was just kind of having a great time by myself. But I was like, I really like this girl. I'm really attracted to her. I think that we fit really well. And now we've been together for years. And, you know, because I just feel like that's what I wanted. And in turn, she was like, oh, I'm starting to see who this guy truly is, right? So the first thing I can think of is, is with Lauren. When I was younger, way before that, I used to sell knives. I worked for a company called Cutco and I was, I'd never been in sales before, but all I wanted to do is be the, the very best sales rep that I possibly could be. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be number one in the office. There is no other option. I, I will not be anything other than that. 
right? And so I built up some confidence. I built some confidence and eventually became number one in the, the office that I was in in Tampa. Then I became a manager with the company. I was like, I will not lose to anybody else because I feel like I am the best that exists. I'm out there. And I, it was just this, this inward belief. It's never a cockiness or anything like that. It's just this, this confidence, this inward belief that I know who I am. I know what I deserve and I know what I can do and my capabilities. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create it. So then I built my office, number one office, United States, right? Then I left there because I was like, I feel like I've done everything that I can. And then I decided to, you know, go into the corporations that I went into. And I was the youngest sales rep in those companies, but still also became the number one sales rep in those companies. I decided to start a podcast, became, you know, the, the top motivational podcast in all of iTunes. We're going to do about 50 million downloads in the next year. And, uh, and then I decided to start a Facebook page and have my videos start to go viral. So I put time into figuring all of those things out. You know, we're about 1.5 billion views on Facebook. And I don't say these things to brag in any sort of way. I just say them because number one, I know what I want. Number two, the opposite of what I want, failure, doesn't exist in my mind. It doesn't exist in my reality. And if it doesn't exist in my reality and I am the creator of my reality, then there's absolutely no way that I will fail. So that's number two. And then number three, I just don't give up. I don't, I don't, I, I don't see anything as failure unless you give up. And so I just decide slow and steady wins the race. Life is a marathon. Business is a marathon. Everything's a marathon. I'm going to put every ounce of energy that I have into whatever this thing is that I want. And I'm not going to do anything else until I succeed at it. Right? So I don't say any of these things to brag. I just say it because this is my perspective, what the past 15 years have been for me and how I've created what I have. And it comes down to what I tend to focus on right? And I say this a lot to, I teach coaches how to impact the world and how to make money and how to grow their coaching businesses. And one thing that I always say to them is don't focus on this not working out. Like if you're trying to build this coaching business, not working out should not exist in your reality, right? Because if it does, and you're focusing on uh, what if this doesn't work out? What if I can't pay my bills? What if this person says no to me? What if one of my clients cancels? You're probably going to create that in your reality. But if you step up and you say, this will be the business that makes me the dreams, the dream life that I want, I'm going to impact the world. I'm going to do this and this and this, and that's the only other option that exists for them, then that's what they're going to create, right? So I want to pause and take a step back. And when you hear me talk about these things, the first thing I want to say is I haven't always been this confident in my capabilities. This is 15 years of working on myself and actually seeing how this works and understanding the law of attraction, understanding manifestation, understanding even if the law of attraction and manifestation are not things that you focus on or they're not in reality, they sound too woo woo for you. I think that I'm a creator and I'm creating my reality at every single moment with every single thought and with every single action. With that being said, when you listen to my story and you think back of your story, when you think about the things that you focus on, you think about the thoughts in your head, the 60 to 80,000 thoughts every single day, are they focusing on everything that you want or everything that you don't want? Think about that for a second. Are you concentrating on building the life that you want or are you concentrating on, I hope this doesn't, I hope I don't fail. I hope other people don't judge me. I hope this person doesn't cancel their order. I hope this works out for me, right? And so you have to have this internal confidence that will be built. It will, the more that you do it, and the more you, if you try this out and it works for you, you'll gain a little bit of confidence. You try it out and you get works for you, you gain a little bit more confidence and more and more and more. And over years, it just compiles into, I don't lose. And that's what you'll start to get to is just, you won't lose. Winners win. And when you step into becoming a winner and you have that winner's mentality, losing doesn't exist. It doesn't because you just won't give up, right? And so, like I told you, my mom says, I get everything that I want. It always, it always, she always makes a joke on it. I just feel like I'm kind of dancing with the universe. Like I, I don't know the way the universe works and I don't think I ever will. I don't think I'm ever going to be that intelligent. God, the universe, whatever is out there. I just feel like we're kind of in a dance and we're, we're having a tango and I'm moving and it's moving and we're figuring it out together. And, and I don't even like to, you know, it's hard to, to use the right words because when I say the life that you want, I'm also taking a step back in my head because I don't even necessarily know if the word want is the best word because want 
is a word that comes from a place of lack, right? A place of, I don't have this thing. And in order to be a powerful creator, you have to create from a place of absolute certainty and pure fulfillment as to where you currently are. So when I want something, a lot of times I'm wanting something coming from a place of lack. I don't have this thing and this thing that I want will complete me in some sort of way, right? That's the reason why a lot of relationships don't work out is because people want to get into the relationship because they are their quote unquote better half or because they complete them. No, it's not, you know, this person completes me. It is that you are already a complete person. They are already a complete person. And the two of you together make a really freaking powerful couple. Right? It's not like I'm I'm incomplete without this person. That person's incomplete without me. We're we're you know two halves. No, it's like your whole, their whole, and you're creating something amazing. So I hesitate saying that this is a life that you want because I feel like it comes from a place of lack. But I, I'm really running out of words to use here, so we're just gonna have to use those words. But you know, it's not even the, it's not even that you want it. It's that you are absolutely certain that it will happen. You know, so how can you brainwash yourself in a sense to being like my future that I want is going to happen. And so when people usually hear about the law of attraction, they hear about manifestation, they think that they're supposed to go into some, you know, nirvana state and meditate and they're going to start floating and then that they're going to say oh money is freeing freely flowing into my life from all layers of the universe and the, the perfect lover that i've always wanted my entire life is going to be knocking at my door soon like all that stuff's beautiful if that's what you want to do but i just happen to be a very you know analytical logical person and i'm like you know what instead of actually sitting there and just meditating on the idea i'm going to fully embody the idea there's nothing wrong with the meditating on i promise you that i do meditate as well but it's like i'm with with every action that i take i am going to be the person that will create this life and i am going to create this reality from absolute certainty so i know that for some of you guys this probably is a big step because maybe you haven't gotten amazing results in everything that you've been wanting to do in your life and so to think okay i and if i look in my past i don't have a whole lot of examples of massive success from me right i've been there before i understand exactly what you're talking about if that's sitting in the back of your head but you have to be able to strip away the past and strip away the present and say hey none of those things actually matter at all for the future that I'm going to create. And so I've got to, in my head, start from a place of absolute certainty. What do I need to do to start from a place of absolute certainty? Well, I need to strip away the past, I need to strip away the present, I need to say the future is being written at any moment, every moment, everything that I do. I've got to, number one, be very clear on what it is that I want. You guys have heard it said in ancient texts, the Bible, all of them, they say, ask and it shall be given, right? Well, if you're going to ask for something, if you're going to focus on something, you better be very, very clear on exactly what it is that you want. So the first part of creating this absolute certainty is to number one, be very clear on what it is that you want, because when you're very, very clear on what it is that you want, it makes it easier to go and hit it. You've heard me say it before. If I were to take you and the number one archer in the entire world and have you two line up and shoot a bow and arrow at something, some target, they're going to beat you every single time. But if you blindfold them and spin them around so they don't know what direction they're facing, and then you are able to, you know, literally see the target and have nothing over your eyes, you have a better chance of hitting it, not because you're better, simply because you can see the target. So the more clear that you can be on what it is that you want to create in your life, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to create it, right? We are all conscious creators. We are creating at every moment of our lives, the exact life that we want, right? You are creating it. If you focus on what you want, you will create more of those things that you want. You will notice the people, places, opportunities, things in front of you that will create that. If you're focusing on what you don't want, you will notice and create the people, places, opportunities, and things that will create the reality of what it is that you don't want right? You've heard me talk about this before. There's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system that is basically the brain's filtering system. At any moment in time, your brain could, if it would probably explode, if you were to be able to take all this in, take in about 2 trillion bits of information, but it only takes in 200 bits of information per second. So your reticular activating system is the filtering system. And so if you're going into your day and you know what it is that you want, but you're thinking to yourself, 
yeah, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Then your reality is going to show you all of the places that you are not good enough. Why? Simply because your reticular activating system, the filtering system is going to find all of the places that you're not good enough. Your brain is basically like cosmic Google. Whatever you ask of it, it will find the answer to. You ever have any friends that have terrible relationship problems and they're like, why do I always find the guys that cheat? Right? If you ask yourself that question, your brain's going to go, it's going to pull up all of the answers as to why you only find the guys that cheat. But if someone were to ask that different question, say, why do I deserve to have somebody who's loyal? Your brain's going to pull up all the answers. Which one are you focusing on? On all of the people who are the cheaters and why you find them? Or on why you deserve to have someone that's loyal? Right? If you focus on what you don't want, you will get what you don't want because your reticular activating system is focused on those things. If you focus on what you do want, you will get more of what you do want. So if you know exactly what it is that you want and you set your reticular activating system to go and get it, once again, the people, places, opportunities, things will pop up in your life and show you where you could possibly move forward in the direction that you're looking for. So you have to be very clear of what you're looking for. A, a perfect example of this is I went um, a few years ago, my friend, it was his birthday and we went on these really fast go-karts. They went like 50 miles an hour. And the guy who owned this track here in Austin is an ex F1 driver. He used to actually drive an F1. Super funny, nice French guy making jokes the whole time as he's explaining everything to us. And then he got really serious at one moment. And he said, listen to me, looks everybody straight in the eye. He says, if there is a crash, which there will be, and my friends are kind of crazy. So there were a lot of them. He said, do not look at the crash because you will hit them. You've got to look at where you want to go. And I was like, that makes so much sense. That's exactly how life is. Because if you look at the crash, what you don't want, you will hit the car in front of you. You ever see a car on the side of the road on the interstate and they're not moving, but somehow some cars just end up hitting them, even though they're not moving because the person was looking at it. So what are you looking at? Are you looking at where you want to go or are you looking at the crash and where you don't want to go? If you've ever been, you know, if you've ever, anybody who listens, rides a motorcycle, knows someone who does, they say, look through the turn, right? So don't look at where you are when you're in a turn on a motorcycle. You're looking at where you want to go because your body, your brain will position you to get to that spot. So you don't look at where you don't want to go. You only look at where it is that you're trying to go. The same way with your go-karts, same way with your motorcycles is exactly how it works in life. You look and you focus on only what it is that you want to go. And you don't have any other example that pops into your head. If you're a salesperson out there, the thing that I teach my, the, the, the coaches that I teach, you know, a lot of people and salespeople say this is, oh, I, I hope this person doesn't say no to me versus I'm going to have this, th this person's going to buy for me. So instead of thinking I'm going, this person's going to buy for me, people think, I hope this person doesn't say no. And if you go into it with the energy of, I hope this person doesn't say no, what do you think they're more likely to do? To say no, right? Everything in life is energy. But if you go into it, if I, if I just think about the energetic state of my body of this person's going to buy in what type of state that would put my body in and how that would change my physiology, how that would change my voice to, I hope this person doesn't say no, right? Like there's a different energetic state that both of them put me into. This person's definitely going to buy and I'm going to change their life. Or I hope this person doesn't say no and how that energy is going to translate to the other person. They're probably going to say no, right? You ever, you ever walked into a room and started talking to someone and immediately you got, mm, yeah, this doesn't feel right. It was bad feelings. We've all been there before, right? And then something happens down the road that shows you, oh yeah, my original feeling about that person, I was right. You ever also had feelings though? You meet somebody and immediately you're like, I feel like I've known this person forever. You become great friends. It's the energy. Think about how the thoughts of what I just said change the energy of how you go in to what is it you do. It changes the emotion into it. Emotion is energy in motion. E motion, energy in motion. So if I think thoughts, it's going to change my energy and the way that I feel. It's going to change the way that I act, which is going to change my results in my physical world because everything is energy. And you can sense when energy is on, you can sense when energy is off. 
But the key to it is you have to think about the thoughts that are going through your head at any moment in time, every moment in time. Are the thoughts that are going through my head getting me closer to or further from my goals? Am I focusing on what I want or what I don't want? And you have to literally analyze every single thought that you have. And it'll take some time. It'll take time to get used to. I've been doing this now for 15, 16 years now, but I have so much proof of how my thoughts change my energy, change my actions, change my reality. And so it, what it takes is, is ultimate self, self-awareness. You've got to think about every single thought that's coming through. You've got to think about every energetic state that you get into. You've got to think about every action that you have. And it takes time. It takes a lot of mental energy when you first get into this. But then what happens is you start to change your thoughts. You change your thoughts. You change your thoughts. And now instead of being habitualized to think negative thoughts and to think about what you don't want, you start being habitualized to think positive thoughts and what is it you do want. Because at any moment in time, every single thought that you have is creating your reality. But you've got to think about this. Are the thoughts that you are having creating the reality that you want? If you change your thoughts, if you change your reality, you change your future. Make sure that you know what it is that you want and then make sure that every thought that you have lines up with that future that you want. And that will then manifest the future in the life that you want. Today, we're going to be talking about the incredible future that you want that seems, and I get it, sometimes when you think about the life that you could have, the life that's in your dreams, the the cars, the houses, the love, the spouse, the family, the traveling, the private jet, whatever it is that you want, you think, oh my gosh, it would be so nice to have this thing. But what we tend to do is by having that feeling of it would be nice, what we're actually doing is we're actually pushing that thing away from us energetically because the the would be nice feeling actually makes it feel like, ah, never going to happen. Can you relate to that? Where you have the feeling of, man, I would love to have that house on the water. It's beautiful. It's amazing. But three million dollars. I don't know if I could ever afford three million dollars, right? And what you're doing is you're actually pushing yourself further away from the life that you want, from everything that you want because of the feeling of, "Mm, I just don't know if it's possible. So today we're going to talk about is how to normalize the feeling of the success that you want. And when when I talk about normalizing, I'm talking about normalizing energetically inside of your body, how it feels to think about those things, how it feels to think about owning those things, and how it feels to think about you being the person that could attract all of that success, all of that happiness, all of that love, all of that life that you truly want. Because the house, the car, the family, the love, the travel, all of those things, the easiest way to get those, and this is gonna be kind of a, a, a mind mess up for most of you guys, the easiest way to get all of the stuff that you want in the future is to have them before you have them. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? To have them and to feel them energetically. And I understand for some of you guys that are analytical, you're like, this sounds like some woo-woo BS. Trust me on this. I, I get it. I've, I understand this. I'm extremely analytical, but also I can dip my toes into the woo-woo-y stuff that's out there as well. The easiest way to have the life that you want is to have it before you have it, right? So for those of you that are like, I don't get it, you're gonna get it. Just follow along with me, okay? This is the reason why people who grow up rich, it's a lot easier for them to make money, right? Because energetically, it's just normal for them. And what I mean energetically, I'm talking about the feeling inside of your body. When I grew up and I used to look at people who had money, there was a part of me that was like, I don't know if I'll ever have it. I don't know if I'll ever get there, right? Can you relate? If you've, if you've grown up not having a whole lot of money, have you ever had the feeling of, I don't know if I can do it though, right? I've had those feelings and most people have those feelings as well. Those feelings inside of your body are what's holding you back from actually getting it, right? It's the reason why people who grow up with money end up usually making a lot of money. Not always, but usually it's just easier for them. It's not too hard. It's not as much to struggle. And the reason why is because it's not too far down the road for them. They're already in the road. They're already on the road. They already know exactly what it is that you need to do. It's simple. It's just normal. That's what I mean by normalizing. If they grew up in a mansion, well, then it's kind of just the standard to live in a mansion, isn't it? And so when they see other mansions, they're not like, oh my God, look at those mansions. They're amazing. It's just like, oh yeah, well, yeah, we have one as well. 
it's normal. It doesn't feel like it's too far away. But this is also the reason why it's so hard to break free from where you currently are, is because where you are feels normal. And the no more normal that you feel, the more uncomfortable it can feel to look at those things that seem so far out of your grasp. They don't seem like th something that you could ever get, right? And so you have to normalize the feeling. And I'll teach you how to do that today. And I'll give you an example of, of a, a feeling that is normalized. Have you ever um, gone to a friend's house maybe? Maybe your friend has a house, you, you become friends with someone who happens to have a, a, an incredible house. And you walk up to their house and the first time you're in it, you're just blown away. It's beautiful. You love the pool. You love the house. You love the decorating. You love the view. You love everything about it. And the first time you're there, you're almost like, holy crap, this is just so incredible. And then you go to their house again and again and again and again and again. And the more that you go to it, it's not like you aren't impressed by the house anymore, but it's just like, oh yeah, I'm just going over to Stacy's house. I'm just going over to John's house. I'm going over to Stacy and John's right? And you're still like, wow, this house is beautiful, but it doesn't blow you away every single time. It blows you away the first time. And then what happens? It starts to become normal to go to Stacy and John's. That's really what it is, right? When I first moved into the house that I have now, I remember when I first walked in and I saw it, I was like, holy shit, I love this house. It's amazing. I've never lived in a house like this. I've never seen a house like this with this, this design. And I was just blown away by it. And then I realized about a month into being here, I was like, this just feels normal. And I was outside and I was, you know, the dogs were outside going to the bathroom. I looked back and I was like, I love this house, but it feels normal to be here now. Like it doesn't feel like, oh my God, it's amazing. It was just like, well, it, you know, it's the house I live in, which is awesome, right? I love it, but it feels normal. It's a good thing, normalizing the feeling. So I remember when I was a kid, I was lucky enough where even though I didn't grow up with a lot of money, I was lucky enough, in my opinion, to have an aunt and uncle who my uncle made great money. He had a business that was doing, you know, $20 million a year. And he had a nice house and a nice car. He lived in a gated community that was on the water on the, the, the beach in Florida, Siesta Key, Florida, which is a super nice beach. And, um, and it's the nicest community, the nicest gated community that's on Siesta Key Beach. And, you know, you would go into the gated community and he used to have a golf cart and my cousin and I would drive the golf cart around. And I remember being a kid consciously 13, 14 years old, 15 years old, whatever it is that we were, you know, younger. So we were driving the golf cart and we would go and look at these houses. And I was like, these houses are amazing. These I'm going to, and I would tell myself all the time when I was a kid, I'm going to live in a house like this one day. I'm going to live in a house like this one day. I'm going to live in a house like this one day. And I would just drive around and I didn't realize that I had no idea what the hell I was doing. But what I was doing is I was starting to normalize the feeling of being around houses that were massive. And I was in houses that were on the beach with beautiful views and Ferraris and Lamborghinis outside. I was just, I was normalizing that feeling, right? So I was lucky enough to be around people like that. I was also lucky enough to see that my uncle is one of the kindest people I've ever met. And so sometimes it, when you're, when you don't grow up with money and you don't see a whole lot of money, you can see how sometimes people with money can be demonized in the media and people can talk trash about them. But I've said it many times in my podcast, some of the kindest, best people I've ever met in my entire life have boatloads of money and they're kind and they're amazing and they're beautiful people. And that makes you realize, oh, they're not as bad as they tend to seem in the media sometimes. Right? So. I was lucky enough to be around people like that. And so I think that for me, the transition from not making much money to making a good amount of money was easier because I was around it and I was normalizing myself for years. Now, if you haven't been around somebody with money or any of that type of stuff, it doesn't mean that you can't normalize the feeling. I won't even lie to you. When I first moved to Austin, I used to, uh, there's, there's a couple areas in Austin that are gated. And I just love driving around and looking at houses. And I love, I've always thought to myself, I want to normalize the feeling of being in houses like this and being in neighborhoods like this. And so what I would do is no joke. If I saw a neighborhood that I really liked, I would park across the street and just wait for someone to drive in. And I would just follow them in. Why? Because I want, I love to be able to dream, right? I love to be able to think that this could be mine. Not because I just want to own more, shit, but because I want to see what it would take from me to become the type of person to get something like that, right? Think about that for a second. What would it take for me to be the person to be able to get that thing, that house or that, you know, car, you know, I was in a place the other day that I followed somebody in 
and they had a, a helicopter outside of their house. And I was like, that's pretty sick. I've never just seen someone's helicopter sitting outside. I thought it was amazing. So there's, there's examples of things like this. Uh, a good friend of mine tells this amazing story of how he, he normalized the house that he wanted. So he knew what part of town he wanted to live in. And this is in Austin and he lives out in the hills now. And uh, there was this big, beautiful house that was being built. And he was driving by it one day, this big, beautiful, modern house. And it wasn't finished. And, you know, big houses take time to, to finish, right? They take years sometimes to finish. And he saw this big, beautiful house. And he, he was like, I'm going to pull over and just see what the house looks like. And it was in the middle of construction. There was nobody there. It was like on the weekend or something like that or at night. And, um, and so literally he walked into the house and he's like, holy crap. Like I can see it's got a pool. I can see it starts to see the layout of the house. I can see the view of downtown Austin through the hills. And so what he did was every day, and this is important, every day he would literally leave work. He has his own business, but he would leave work and he would tell himself, I'm driving home, I'm driving home, I'm driving home, I'm driving home. Every single day he would drive to that house first and he would get out, park his car in the driveway. You know, he'd get done with work six, seven o'clock. So usually the guys aren't doing construction by the time. And he would literally walk into the house walk into the front door and say, I'm walking into the front door of my house. He would walk in and he would literally start to go through the house and say, this is my bedroom. This is my, and you know, some of you guys are like, that's kind of creepy. The guy's walking through a house. that's not his. Nah, it can be creepy, whatever, but you know, no judgment. And then he would go to the view and he would, he would visualize himself sitting there and drinking his cup of coffee every single morning. I'm going to drink my coffee this view, drink this coffee this view. And he would normalize it day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. And it became normal. The feeling of the house went from holy crap, this view, holy crap, this house, holy crap, this layout to this is my house. I just haven't, paid, I just haven't paid for it yet. Right. I'd recommend you don't do this at anybody who actually lives in a house. This would only be for construction, right? Don't go to someone's house and be like, this is my house when you knock on their door, but you know, go, you can go to the house and you went to the house and eventually the house is finished. And the people who actually paid for the house moved into the house. And then one day it went on the market and he went in to go see how much it was. And it was over a million dollars for the house. And, uh, he went in to see if he could afford it. And the bank said he couldn't afford the loan. But he said, this is my house, this is my house, this is my house. And over the next 30 days, he was able to build his business to a such a significant number. He went back into, because you know this is before Austin's market was just insane like it is now. He went back into the, the loan officer and asked them, show them what his business was doing and was able to make it work. He bought that house four years after normalized the feeling of that being his house. You could tell me that's a coincidence if you want to. But there's also something behind the scenes that I think is working, right? Whether it's the universe or God, or whether it's just the normalizing of the feeling, or maybe it is coincidence. He was able to normalize the feeling of that being his house, that being the house that he was going to. Now, what does he do? He walks into his house. He parks inside of his driveway. He sleeps in the room he told himself he would sleep in. He has coffee every single morning with the view that he told himself he was gonna have coffee with the view in. Why? Because he freaking created his reality, right? So you gotta think to yourself, which reality am I creating? What feelings am I normalizing? Am I normalizing the feelings of being broke because I'm hanging out with broke people all of the time, right? And they're talking about how, you know, the, it's the government's fault. It's the president's fault. It's my boss's fault. It's the, the local authorities fault. So whatever it is that's going on around them. And they're like, they're blaming, they're taking all of the blame and externally putting on someone else. Or you hanging out with people who make, you know, making a decent amount of money normal to you to feel that way. Right? What car do you want? Why don't you go test drive it? Guess how much it costs to test drive a car? Nothing. So if you have a car and it's on the background of your computer, like when I was younger, I used to have cars in the background of my computer, the background of my phone, all of that stuff. I want to see it. I wanted to normalize it. Why don't you, instead of having it be on a computer, which seems out of reach because you can't physically touch that car through your computer, why don't you go to the Audi dealership or whatever it is and test drive that car? Even if you can't afford it right now, and as you're driving the car, say, this is my car. I'm driving my car. I'm driving my car. I'm driving my car. I'm driving my car. And then go a month later and do it again. And then go a month later and do it again. And just keep test driving the cars and go to different places and start to normalize the feeling. If you have a, you know, a Toyota right now, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you're looking and you're like, I want an Audi. Well then 
as you are actually going to the Audi dealership, say, I'm going to pick up my car, I'm going to pick up my car, I'm going to pick up my car. And then you test drive it. And when you get back into your Toyota, you're going to go, damn, I am grateful that I do have this car that can drive me around. But that Audi was amazing. It's going to give you internal drive to work harder towards that thing that you saw, towards that thing that you want. It's going to normalize the feelings inside of you of actually having that. What if you want a great relationship? Are there people around you that have incredible relationships? And you know, maybe you grew up in a house that didn't, your parents didn't have a great relationship. Maybe they fought a lot. Maybe they got divorced. And all you've ever seen was turmoil in a relationship. Is there someone that you know or people that you can get around that have an incredible relationship so that you can denormalize the feeling of turmoil in a relationship and normalize the feeling of what an abundant, beautiful, loving relationship looks like? If you want to be a great parent, maybe you have your first kid on the way. Do you know anybody that's an incredible parent that you can normalize the feelings of being an incredible parent? Anything that you want in this world is within reach. But if you look at something and you think to yourself, mm, I don't know, like energetically, it feels too much. To me, it feels like it's impossible. That is something that needs to be normalized because if you feel like it's impossible, it is 100% impossible. If it feels like it's out of reach, it is always going to be out of reach. The way to bring it into reach is to be able to start to, to, to live that life, to normalize the feeling of that house, to normalize the feeling of that car, to normalize the feeling of that relationship, to normalize the feeling of being a great parent, to normalize whatever it is that you want because everything that you want is fully 100% within your reach. But if you think to yourself that it is out of reach, I promise you, you've already taken yourself out of the race before you've even stepped up to the line. The way to win in life is to figure out what it is that you want and to normalize those feelings because the life that you want is within reach. That 10 years from now, that perfect life, that beautiful family that travels all over the place and has the abundance of money to do whatever they want and to give it away and to give it to charity, all of that is within reach, but you have to normalize the feeling internally first before you actually get it externally. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. You have no one else to blame except for yourself for how your life is right now. And that's a fact. That is actually a fact. 